Welcome to Tom Bob Outdoors, Friends in Wild Places. On this week's very special episode, we join our partners at the Pennsylvania Game Commission for an exciting and emotional trip to a bear den in the Sproul State Forest. Joining us on this trip is Aiden Kohler. Aiden is a very special 10 year old with some special health issues who loves the outdoors. We are very thankful he and his dad cleared their hectic schedule to be with us on this trip. Stay tuned, you're watching Friends in Wild Places. Welcome to Tom Bob Outdoors, Friends in Wild Places. I'm Raleigh Cogan, your host, and this week we're in the Pennsylvania Wilds on the Sproul State Forest. We're here with Matt Ho, the Executive Director of the Game Commission. Matt, we're glad to be here with you again. It's great to be here, Raleigh. This is our fourth year in a row now. The camera crews from Tom Bob have been with the Game Commission in the bear dens. And uh, if you remember back four years ago, we were in a, a bear den that it was a rock. Remember that rock den? Yep, yep. Bears were down in the rocks. Second year we were in a den, it was uh, the base of a blowdown. Mm -hmm. Last year we were in a den, it was an excavation. Right. And this year it's another excavation. So the camera crews of Tom Bob are back in there with uh, Mark Trinette, the black bear biologist. Matt, give us a sense, uh, we've got a group of folks here with us today. They come from all walks of life. They're here to experience uh, this bear den and learn more about it. Who are some of these folks? Well, we've got a, quite a group here today. Um, First of all, I guess our star here today is a, a young gentleman by the name of Aiden Kohler. And uh, Aiden's got uh, some serious health conditions going on right now. And we wanted, Aiden is a 10 year old who absolutely loves the outdoors. Mm -hmm. And uh, loves to hunt, loves to fish. And uh, I guess he's called a real outdoorsy kid. And we wanted to get Aiden out here to experience this while he could. And, and I, you know, as we've talked before, Raleigh, I don't think there's a, a greater wildlife experience in Pennsylvania, uh, a one single experience, than going to a, a bear den, a sow with cubs, and so, going to experience that. So his, his father got a hold of you and talked to you about this. How'd you find out about this? Actually, what happened was um, one of our wildlife conservation officers down in York County uh, read about Aiden in the paper, and he notified us in Harrisburg that uh, about this young man and said wouldn't it be nice if we could do something for Aiden mm -hmm. and so we uh, didn't take long to think of you know a great experience this time of the year for him. What a great opportunity because we happen to be real close to the road able to get Absolutely. into this this wild place here in this clear cut and be able to share this with Hayden. You know, I'm sure it's it's pretty cool for him the expression on his face he's never held a cub before but be able to provide an opportunity like this I commend you for doing that and we're happy to be along with you. Yeah we're glad you're here you know it's a it's kind of a, a whole you know the whole group the, all the partners jumped together on this you know we we didn't have a lot of uh time to prepare for this uh, basically last <clears throat> friday i uh called aiden's father and talked to him and um, told him about this opportunity and of course aiden's becoming quite the celebrity now and he had a, a whole schedule of events for today and uh when aiden heard they had the opportunity to come to the bear den uh, basically he canceled everything else he had to do. The young man's experienced quite a bit for as young as he is. I he mean, has. he's hunted, he's killed some deer, he's killed yeah. some other animals, right. experienced the outdoors, and and he wanted to come and do something in the outdoors, and to be able to come and do this is pretty special for right. all of us. So yeah. to be able to share that with him and, and yeah. the rest of his family is pretty cool. Yeah, so. it's it's phenomenal experience. I know 
Uh, I'm sure Aiden, I, just by the look on Aiden's face, he's really enjoying it, <laughs> and I'm sure his dad is really enjoying this also. Yeah, so, so he got to great. see the three cubs and went back in to see the sow, and it all worked out really well for him. So we're also here with Mark Trinette, the black bear biologist, and we're going to get a chance to talk to him too. This is some pretty intensive black bear research going on in Pennsylvania. Right, there is, and you know, the Sproul State Forest, we're doing a, a black bear research project here. It's been going on for quite a few years. Uh, right now, uh, Mark has 38 uh, sows that are collared mm -hmm. in the Sproul. And so he's able to go in and locate those uh, bears every spring. And, you know, some of those bears will have yearlings that, you know, that were cubs last year. And, and other ones have cubs this year, so. So he uh, tracks in using radio telemetry and finds these bears. Uh, they were telling us a story about this one. They actually walked by it a couple times. Right, well, it's so close to the road yeah. that they didn't expect it to be there. Yeah. And it's in such a great den. It's got an excavation just like a groundhog would have, basically. Mm -hmm. and they walked right past it. So, I mean, you know, it's it's like the perfect <laughs> den, so. Uh, but it's, you know, it was perfect for Aiden because it's probably less than 50 yards off the road. We were able to get Aiden in there and see mm -hmm. it. And worked yeah. out very well. A bear den with three cubs and a mama bear is not wide open space by any means, and diving in head first is definitely not for the faint of heart. However, Pennsylvania bear biologist Mark Turnett does it with ease and grace, thankfully for us and all those who are able to attend this awesome day. I don't know what you call this because all we're doing is holding them, we're not hunting them. Pretty special. Yeah, it is. It's amazing that these are wild animals. Yeah, yeah. Where is he doing it? He'll be talking in a little bit when they put ear tags on them. Yeah. They like to talk then. Really? Do they squeal? Aiden, which tag, which ear do you want to get tagged? Right or left? <laughs> well, they always stick your left hand to go for the left ear. Ouch. You might have the biggest one, bud. Here, you can have another one. You want another one? We can't get them in the jacket anymore, but we can put them in the blanket. Yeah, try a new one, Aiden. Adam? There you go. Then yeah, what's going on? What's going on here? Give me some there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Central Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, he's yawning, and, uh, Aiden. Oh, yeah. He's nice. yawning. He's tranquilized See, the mama bear. Get him nice and toasty warm. Oh, there you go. And it took us a while. Yeah. There's a little bit he of He needs you warm. You got him bubbled up. And now he just there got the cubs go. out. And Aiden has a big smile on his face. <laughs> Imagine what being all snuggled in with your mama. Here, while you hold him, you want to look at this one? See his face? <laughs> How you doing, buddy? 
How old are they? Do, they? do we know how old they are? They're born in January. He's crawling up It never, never gets tiring. <laughs> never. How many years you been doing this, bro? 32 years. I uh, probably went to my first bear day. little guy come out. In uh, 30 years ago. And again, 30 years of this never gets, never gets tired. <laughs> Pretty special, huh? It's very special. They, uh... Our special guest today is Keith Gillespie. Keith is the chairman of the House Game and Fish Committee. Keith, you've been up in elk country before. You've been on the Sproul before. You've been on these kind of outings before. This is a special day. Oh, this is a special day, um, Raleigh. And uh, actually, our special guest is Aiden from uh, from York County, young man. Isn't he close to your home district? He is. Uh, actually, with reapportionment, I, I actually lost his neighborhood, but uh, he's right on the right on the line there. And um, you know, wonderful, wonderful uh, community. Uh, you know, dad you know made the trip up here today with him what a story tell us about when he had those three cubs i tell you what uh you know i just found out about this a few days ago and they said well you know, we did too it, we it, only found out like last friday so and four or five days really ago. rallied up the troops to to get everybody out here i mean to, to be able to to have this documented for the family and uh, uh everything else that's been associated with this is just absolutely wonderful everybody's pulled together kiko game commission um to make this possible is just it's it's heartwarming but uh, I was reading this article a couple of days ago, and I found out this, and they, they mentioned something that he had was target shooting and had a, a slight smile. Well, just a few minutes ago, when he was holding those three cubs, mm -hmm. it was a sustained smile from ear to ear. Uh, obviously, not so much to Aiden and, mm -hmm. his, and his family. It was a special moment, that's for sure. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody handle three cubs like that, and they sound, they felt pretty secure right there. They did, you know, yeah. it's amazing. I mean, normally they're crawling all over the place yeah. or trying to get back and balling and, and scratching and, at you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, scratching and carrying on, and you know, they just like, you must have a, a really calming effect on them because they're just all three laying there like mm -hmm. they're laying inside the, mm -hmm. uh, the den. Special moment, and we're glad to share it with you and the rest of the crew here today. Raleigh, thank you so much Thanks for making for this here. possible and, we and appreciate for the it. opportunity to be here. Thank you. you betcha. It was a very positive and uplifting day for everyone involved. From breakfast till the time we left, everybody had a smile on their face. Especially young Aiden was a very special boy who had the time of his life with the Pennsylvania Game Commission and Tom Bob Outdoors. There you go, that's it. Yeah! There you go. Now push, push it the other way. Can you push it up? Push this way with it. See that? There you go. All right.
not much, huh? I guess not. <laughs> Brandon, is that true about what bears in the, the woods are not necessarily? Well, today it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that? This is faster. That's right. <laughs> yep. Everyone's got one. After hood. So what? Can you see that? You can see what that number says when it stops moving. Point six. Dad, cool it is. <laughs> Look at the kids in there. I don't think it feels bad. <laughs> Where's a pair of pliers at? with uh, Pennsylvania Game Commission and black bear biologist Mark Turnett. Mark, we appreciate, as always, you uh, hosting us out here and showing us some of this really cool uh, bear research you're doing. My this pleasure. Is, this is one of your study areas, right, on the Sproul State Forest? And this is actually our largest study area. Um, we have about a 100 square mile area. We're in the middle of the Sproul State Forest right now. And, and that Sproul State Forest is what, 300, 330,000 acres? Yeah, it's actually the largest state yeah. forest in the state. Mm -hmm. um, but what's unique about it and why we have a study area here is it represents a much greater part of the bear range. You know, this type of habitat that you see here today is representative of what we call the Big Woods region of the state. And so what we learn here, we can apply to those other parts of the state. A lot of the previous research in Pennsylvania occurred in the Poconos. And the Pocono region is nice, but it's not really representative. If you go over to the northeast part of the state, there's not a bear alive over there that doesn't know what bird feeders or garbage cans are. And to us, that represents conflict but to a bear that represents calories. Mm -hmm. So, but here, the bear we just saw today has probably never seen a bird feeder in its life. It's never seen a garbage can. It makes a living uh, from the land like a, a typical bear should. So that means fewer calories. And so we do see slightly lower productivity in this area, but we're still seeing average litter sizes. Okay, so from a hunter standpoint, find a food, find a cover, and you're going to find the bears. That's, yep, that's pretty It's that simple. It's that, but. But yet they are really hard to kill. They're well, tough. Finding food is a challenge. You yeah. know, if, uh, you know, you've got to put your time in walking ahead of time. You know? you know those years, Mark, where you have, this ridge may have a whole bunch of beech nuts and acorns on it. And you may go miles and miles and then you find that other ridge that didn't get that late frost. Yep. Those are the years where it seems like those bears are congregated there yep. and they're easier to harvest because the food isn't spread out. It's concentrated. Therefore, the bears are concentrated. Yeah. Well, just imagine, right? If I told you you didn't, you weren't going to get another meal for five months. I'd be pretty grouchy. You'd be you'd be looking for you'd be looking for the yeah. best place you could find to eat, yeah, and that's sure. what the bears do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Over here. All right. Well, Mark, we again appreciate you taking us into the den for the fourth year in a row. Okay. Uh, it's always an adventure for us. We've seen quite a few bears. You've seen more than anybody, but it is still an enjoyable event. So, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Certainly. You bet. My pleasure. And, and Bill, I sure appreciate you making sure that your son was able to come out and experience this today. And, and for us to be able to be a part of this and share this experience with him, it's been really special to us. He was all excited about coming up when yeah. I told him about it. Today, we, he slept on the way up, but when we got here, it took him a little bit to wake up. Yeah. And when we actually got out here, he he was a little bit excited. Yeah, he, he sure looked it. And, and I've never seen anyone have three cubs and be able to have those cubs so kind of relaxed and just they're just hanging right next to them. That's pretty special. He's the animal whisperer. Is he? <laughs> he's, yeah. he's good with the animals. He's like, yeah. Has he always been that way? Oh, yeah. He's his dogs, everything. Yeah. Something about him and 
animals and babies. What was his reaction whenever, um, whenever you got off the phone with Matt Ho with the Game Commission and, and decided you were going to make this happen? Oh, he was, he was calling his buddies and yeah? telling his buddies, and <laughs> he was all excited. Then everybody was saying they're jealous, and that even made it worse for me. He was like, when he got that first cub. Yeah, I saw the look on his face, pretty special. Yeah, that was, he, yeah. He was grinning ear to ear, that's for sure. It's been a great experience for us, that's... and it, it sure looked like it was for Hayden and oh, for you yeah. too. So yeah, he did. He that was that was the greatest. Thing. When he almost cried when he wanted yeah. to put it back, uh -huh. he didn't want to put it back. Yeah, he wanted to stay there a little longer. Yeah. But yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate you spending time with us and and letting us film this and getting the posse yeah. crew here from Tom Bob Outdoors to film this. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank again. you very much. I really appreciate you that. bet.